Some folks call me a rust bard, but I don't think this stuff is too hard. So if you want to join in, shoot yourself for the win. Without further ado, let us start. Today, I'm discussing in rhymes a language that goes with the times. Of course, I mean rust, and I'll come up with just enough stuff to talk till the bell chimes. <laughs> I'm coding in Java by day. Sometimes it gets in my way. Where in Rust I abstract, I need to counteract runaway patterns joining the fray. That's about Java. <laughs> Rust land is a very strange place without Naldiref nor data arrays. It has its own styles, but once it compiles, it will never blow up in your face. Now, the next one's for Steve. Rustland is a... <laughs> Pardon. Rustland is a commie utopia. <laughs> a zero-cost cornucopia. For we may freely loan things that others must own. As if ownership's causing myopia. Rustations will usually track their heap usage forwards and back, so no allocation leads to altercation. One could say that we're coding full stack. <laughs> now you see, Rust has implicit drop, so your data will silently plop out of memory as one unless you're holding on to it until your program will stop. <laughs> I was expecting laughs now. <laughs> With box, you put stuff on the heap. <laughs> Pardon. It is surprisingly cheap, and unlike on stack, things stay if you go back from a function or otherwise leap. If in Rust code you need to store one item of some type or more, you say, what the heck, let's simply use vec, the name is omitting a tor. As many a Rust newbie feared, a wild burrow checker appeared. It's super effective, a reference detective, so your code becomes well-engineered. <laughs> when in Rust code you use a for, it will loop and each time ask for more. If it does get a none, iteration is done. Otherwise, uh, there's some value in store. Rust used to just iterate, but soon we too may generate, yield a sequence of stuff, then resume. That's no bluff. Look out pipe before it's too late. <laughs> That's nice, isn't it? <laughs> Don't panic in Rust code for sport. Only do it as a last resort give result back, and if an error's on hand, you can handle it without a board. <laughs> Speaking of which, result is a return type tailored to functions that either do fail or return on success to the calling process. So uh, Rust is quite candid on failure. Can someone guess what that about? <laughs> With error chain, you can lay back, assume that your code is on track to handle all faults with nice, sane defaults. Unwrap is a lazy ass hack.
You want rust to pass. You may choose num, combine, chomp, lollipop, peruse, pom, peel, or another. There are many other. Now you still don't know which one to choose. <laughs> With unimplemented confess to your users, the method is less than done. You can now add a message of how to deal with the unfinished mess. To delve a bit more into what is new, PR42155 brought to you the way to get your mes message through for things that you still intend to do. More cats. <laughs> Rust newbies get hung on a thing. What is it with and, str, and string? The former is loaned while the latter is owned and thus memory allocating. <laughs> Oops, pardon. need to save memory and don't know how. <laughs> you may want to consider a cow, so instead of a clone, you can borrow or own. So use it in all your code now. <laughs> Let x be a mutable slice of T, where T has a size, then we can mem replace it in various ways. I think that is awesomely nice. <laughs> Whenever you write code like this, you may hum Indiana Jones tune. Because you do the same switch root trick he employed in the Temple of Doom. <laughs> Crates.io has 10k crates in store and every day is getting more. So in this secret layer looks relatively bare. Yet no crate to melt Nazis here, or? Any closure will, if it can, implement a trait we call fn. Also be fn mut and that's double plus good, and perhaps fn once once again. Note that fn once consumes the self, whereas fn mut and fn borrow, so reach not for that fn once shelf unless you can consume without sorrow. Rust maps to have entries in store don't need double takes anymore. They are awakened or not. Anyway, pretty hot if you know what to employ them for. If you implement from T for foo, Rust will freely deliver in two. So use from if it fits and the orphan rule permits and the rest the compiler will do. Rust's default trait gets more hype the more you use it for a type. For you may want to strive to use auto-derive. Result, you have less code to type. Surprise! By default, Rust does read and write without buffer, but speed is less than fast, so newbies may blast the wait for I.O. to complete. Austin Hicks did a stellar job reducing Rust memory slop by teaching Rust C to reorder fields free unless wrapper C tells it to stop. And one thing with that stuff which is cool, with optimization fuel, we can test where this change 
leads to things weird or strange, that's a really great debugging tool. Ralph Jung and his merry rustations performed some great verifications of unsafe things rust, so we can all trust it is solid for all applications. Burnt Sushi, when asked to, to rewrite, rip grab in C++ said he might, but he'd like to refrain from the need to maintain it at that would be hell of a fight. Char, is that right? A game built in Rust got greenlit on Steam, so we just send congratulations amidst great celebrations. Soon we'll say it our Rust game dev lost. <laughs> I have to bring this one, obviously. Our Clippy will warn us on code that may at some day corrode through our source and about, it will gladly look out for patterns that do not well bode. You use Rust's type system to restrict how your API is used and be strict. You will love compile test to put your fears to rest if the wrong restrictions you picked. Rust coding is one of the best if you want to easily test your code when given stuff performs correct enough. CargoFuzz will take care of the rest. Our Rust will help you conserve the battery charge you reserve for the code that you run, for your work, or for fun, or what from your service you serve. <laughs> Hands up, who knows that one? <laughs> well, quite a few. Rust code with a value on break may lead to a certain mistake. If you try to break Rust, Try it out if you must in the Rust Easter egg hunt partake. <laughs> Who knows what Rust in six weeks give us new features and tweaks? Will it blend? Will it slice and be awesome and nice? Oh, now I sound like a total geek. In May, Rust will be three years old. You know, we all call me from one zero. The changes have been pretty bold. Every six weeks it grew out the old, in the new. Yet the stability promise will hold. And looking into my crystal ball, I see much awesome progress this fall with implementations by many restations. It's the imp period after all. With Rust, more folks get access to systems programmings with less fearful foot guns and stuff. C++ has enough. So here's to its ongoing success. <laughs> <laughs> if into Rust you want to enter, there may be a few who haven't yet, <laughs> join a project and find you a mentor who will help you for free so you can easily become a great Rust implementer. <laughs> Rustations don't need to code Rust. We document, teach, block, and dust off some or other test 
lay our worries to rest that our code may not do what it must. <laughs> I had to bring this one, really. Let's bring some elucidation. Rust owes its denomination to a fungus that has three life stages. Alas, many mistake it for oxidation. Let zombie arcs into interfold, zero, old P, P parse, unwrap plus old, printl times bada bum, zero, U64 plus sum, slash, slash, this one's limerick gold. <laughs> Thanks for listening while I wax poetically on multiple stacks, and I hope that you walk happy out of this talk Otherwise, there'll be no money backs. <laughs>